what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they built their businesses, the challenges, everything in between. I always encourage people to check out more episodes. I'm going to introduce Aaron Walker in a second. Um, Aaron, I always like to point people towards other episodes of the podcast. And since we're going to be talking right now, we're talking what is Aaron Walker's typical Black Friday. And it's may, probably not what you think. Um, I like the TerraCycle. I had the, the founder of TerraCycle on there. And I look at giving back, giving back to the environment, um, to you know the social economy. Re, the founder of Re, uh, Regrained, uh, Daniel Kurzrock, um, and they take waste from brewing, brewing companies, the spent grain, and create stuff out of them. So check out that many more. And uh, the episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help B2B businesses launch and run podcasts. Really what we ultimately do, Aaron, is we help people give to and connect to their best relationships. I look at podcasting as a way to um, give to my best relationships, profile them, the companies um, that they work with, what they do, their thought leadership, and tell the world what they do. So if you've thought about doing a podcast, I think Aaron's been on more podcasts than anyone I've known. Um, But if you thought about doing one, you can uh, go to rise25.com, email us. We've been doing it for over a decade. Um, and so ask us any questions that you choose that you like. And Aaron Walker is a founder of View From The Top. Uh, you can go to viewfromthetop.com. Check out Iron Sharpens Iron Mastermind. He coaches business leaders with, with his over 35 plus years of entrepreneurship experience, eight successful businesses. His companies include Pawn Shops. They started when he was 18, sold the Fortune 500 company called Cash America USA at 27 for seven figures. And he also started a multi million dollar construction company, that and much more. Aaron, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, listen, man, when I found out you wanted me to do this, uh, I went in and told my wife because I've been on a two month sabbatical and she hit the ceiling. She goes, man, I thought you wasn't working. I said, but anytime I get a chance to talk to Dr. Jeremy, I'm going to talk to Dr. Jeremy because I so love being on your show. You just always bring so much energy. You've always meant so much to me over the years. And uh, when we started talking about the topic that we're going to talk about today, I said, you know what? That's not working. And so I want to go and do the interview. So thank you for having me as your yeah. guest. Awesome. Yeah. So this is, we're on Black Friday um, right now. And so I want Aaron just to walk us through when we are texting back and forth. Um, I go, we need to do an episode. We need to do an episode today on this. So um, t- walk me through your Black Friday. Sure. Let me give you a little backstory first. About eight years ago, uh, my two daughters came to me, Brooke and Holly. I've got a daughter, 38, and one's 36. And at the time, obviously, you know what, they were 28 and 30. And they said, hey, dad, would you mind watching the grandkids while, you know, Robin, my wife, their mother takes them shopping? And I said, listen, I'll do anything to keep from going shopping. Like, I'll do anything. You name it, I'll do it. She said, well, I think watching your grandkids is something you would enjoy doing anyway. So at the time, there were four grandchildren. Now we have five. Uh, but they brought the uh, children over early in the morning. It was like six in the morning and they all called me big A and they said, big A, what are we going to do today? And I sat there and I thought a minute, I thought, man, it's cold outside. We can't go outside. And I said, Hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go today and do random acts of kindness. And they went, what is that? And I said, well, come on and I'll show you, Jeremy. I have to admit on the show, I was making it up on the fly. I was like, Hey, we'll, we'll figure it out. So that's morphed into what we call gratitude day. And we do it every black Friday and we've been doing it for eight years now. So I'll I'll share with you what that looks like. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how it started in a few minutes. So what we do, Jeremy, is we think about other people, something that we should be doing every day anyway, right? But it's very intentional what we do. And what we started doing in the earlier days is that we would go to a a restaurant, a local restaurant. It's a Waffle House. Many of you have eaten at the Waffle Houses down the interstate. And so we went in and we sat there and we said, hey, you know, we want to anonymously 
pick up, you know, the other checks here in the restaurant. And the waitress said, all of them. I said, well, just give us that table, that table table," (laughs) to start with. That's what we started doing. So we did that. And then they said, big A, what are we going to do now? And so we would go to the nursing home. We went by Walmart. I have a quick question. Do you stick around to see the reaction? At all, no, you know, no, I mean, I know the no, part of it. You're, it's anonymous, no, so you don't want yeah, them to know. But no. I'm curious if you, you, you know, occasionally the over the years, people figure it out because now we pick up the whole restaurant. We just say, hey, if they come in and we're here, uh, we'll we'll get their check. And a lot of people eventually kind of figured out. You know, I'm sitting there with five grandkids, and you know, they're bringing me these stack of checks. And so some people figured out, and they come walking up, and they'll say. Hey, we want to thank you for breakfast. And we'll go, Hey, thank you. But we're really trying to do this anonymously, but, but I'll go on and tell them what we're doing now that we're busted. Right. I'll go ahead and tell them what we're doing. And it is amazing, Jeremy, at how the other people are so grateful. And they say, you know, I'm going to go out and pay this forward. I'm going to go out, Mm. find somebody. Even last year when we were sitting there at the waffle house, this guy was up there paying and my oldest granddaughter, her name's Abby. Abby walked up to me and she said, Hey, big A, they're up there paying. And I said, Oh, oh, hold on. So I jumped up and I ran up to the register and I told the cashier, I said, Hey, I've got his. And the guy goes, are you the guy that bought ours? And I said, what? He said, somebody else came in and I'm buying theirs. And I went, yes, yes. That's what it's all about right there. So my grandkids got to see somebody paying it forward in person, which made a real impression on them. And since then, that's kind of morphed into others. And so I know I'm being a little sporadic here, but we'll jump around because. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Tell you other stories and how things happen. But no, the intention is not to draw attention to ourselves. The intention is for them to do this anonymously, right? Because we want to teach them to be generous without the notoriety, without the, you know, hey, way to go. We, We just want to teach it because it's the right thing to do. And so. After we leave there, we always go to Walmart or Target or somewhere like that, and we'll buy buggy loads of cookies or um, we'll, we'll buy like toys and things like that. So we'll go to the nursing home. There's a bunch of nursing homes here, and we'll go around and visit the senior adults, and uh, we'll give them cookies or candy, and the grandkids will play cards with them or checkers, or they'll color with them. And over the years, they'll start weeks in advance and they'll write little letters to some of the senior adults. They'll, COVID kind of took that away this year and last year we weren't able to go, but they'll uh, color little pictures for them. And these people will hang it up in their rooms, you know, at the nursing homes. And you're just building this rapport with these people. And then you go back year after year, they kind of get used to seeing them and they, you know, watch the grandkids grow up. And then these kids are seeing these senior adults and, they're getting a great appreciation for a lifestyle that they get an opportunity to live that a lot of people don't get to live. They just don't, you know, they're bound in these nursing homes. They're in uh, some housing uh, situations that our grandkids are fortunate enough not to have to live in. And I want them to see, you know, the way some people have to live and I want them to do it because they genuinely want to help these people. It's not something they're being made to do. They don't have to go every year. So we'll do that. We'll go to the nursing homes and then we'll go to like Vanderbilt Children's Hospital and uh, we'll give away toys to the kids or then we'll leave there and we'll go by like uh, one of the donut places, either, you know, Krispy Kreme donuts or one of the donut places. And we'll get several dozen donuts. We'll leave there and go back to the hospitals. We'll go to the waiting rooms and we'll give donuts away to the people that are waiting on people to have surgery. I didn't realize how many people had surgery on Black Friday, but surgery you know, a respecter of no one. So they have to do surgery at certain times. And people are always asking us, who are you? Why are you doing this? And we never tell them who we are, but we always tell them why we're doing it. And that's to teach our grandchildren to be generous. And then after that, we'll go to like uh, some of the department stores. And a lot of people don't even know what this is, but a lot of people have to put things on layaway. They put a deposit down, and uh, they are not able to pay for it all at once and they have to make payments. And we've paid people's layaways off or we'll get behind them, some senior adult at Walmart or some family that looks like they have two or three children and they'll ring up all their groceries and we'll say, hey, we got this, you know, and we'll pay for it. A lot of people are listening to this right now and they're going, well, Big A, we don't have the kind of money that you've got and we can't do that. But that's not true. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to go to the nursing home or go to the hospital and visit with people or 
go to a community that's underprivileged and even give away some toys that were your children's toys, you know, that they've outgrown or something like that. It doesn't take money to do the things that we're doing. So I want to be sure that I leave a, the right impression with you. And I always say that money doesn't change the heart. It magnifies what's already there. And a lot of people say, well, I would do it if I had a lot of money, but if you're not doing it now, you probably wouldn't do it if you had a lot of money. And so it's a matter of the heart, Jeremy. And so that's what we're trying to teach our grandchildren to do. Yeah, because it's a time thing, too, where they're going and visiting at the elderly homes and right. and they're actually, you know, for those particular things, you could donate your time. Or like you said, you may have stuff laying around the house that you don't use and go and, and donate it or sure. give it away. Sure. Just go and help. The thing that's cool is, is doing it uh, anonymously as you can, but then not trying to take the accolades and, hey, look at me and look what we're doing. It's, it, we're teaching these children to really develop a heart that's compassionate, uh, a heart for people. Uh, a lot of people listening to this right now are very wealthy, I'm sure, and they're able to do as much or more than we've done by far. But what's cool, Jeremy, is that, you know, we lead Iron Sharpens Iron Mastermind, and we have about 150, 160 members in our mastermind groups. We have about 18 groups. And I started sharing this in the mastermind, and a lot of the people in there said, man, we never do anything with our kids like that. We never do anything with our grandkids like that. So it started a little bit of a movement because we're in about six or seven different countries now. So people all over the world literally have taken this approach and Last year, one of our members said that he has three adult daughters and they have a couple of grandkids. He said they went to the bank and they got a whole strap of like $10 bills. I don't He didn't tell me how much it was, but he stood at the drive through window at Chick-fil-A. And every time somebody went through, he would pay for their meal. He said what he noticed was people circling the building, getting back in line. And then they were buying the person's meal in front of them. The mm. person would go through. So it started this circular motion. He said, I would go to pay for somebody. I say, no, you've already paid for ours. We're coming back through. We're paying for somebody else's. And so we've heard story after story like that of people doing things. And then there was this one guy <laughs> said he went to a restaurant. He kind of took our cue on the restaurant. And he said he went in and he bought a couple of tables and somebody in the restaurant got word of what he did and he bought everybody else's dinner in the restaurant. And so it's contagious. And so the point is, is that once you get this thing started and you start encouraging other people like Jeremy, you texted me earlier, really nice Thanksgiving message and said, Hey, big A, what are you doing today? My family and I've been out doing some things and I explained to you what we're doing. And you said, man, that would be so cool to even do that with my kids. You know, I would love to do something like that. And then you invited me to tell a little bit more about it. That's what I'm talking about. Once we get to doing things like this and you share it, not to boast, and I'm not doing this to boast at all. I'm doing this to encourage other people to do it. It's just so gratifying for yourself. And then it starts kind of a movement. But now we've got, I don't know, Jeremy, how many people literally all over the world practicing gratitude day each and every year. Yeah. And what I love about that is it's, it's just sometimes we just get at least I, you, I get busy with my daily life. And it's just like, when you hear that, it's just, we should be doing that. It's, it's not even coming to our head sometimes, myself included. So to hear it from you, it just brings it to the forefront. And it could be something simple. I know my friend, Tony G, whenever I'm on the phone with him, he's maybe going through the Starbucks drive through He'll just do it whenever, every single time he's through Starbucks drive through and he's like, oh yeah. And I'll just hear him say, hey, I'm pay for the two cars behind me or something. And it's, you yeah. know, it could be five or $10, yeah. but it is a pay it forward situation where it just, if that happens to that person, they just want to pay it forward. And that trickle effect, a positive trickle effect is huge. You know, what happens It's funny. I guess a lot of people pick Starbucks. We do that also every time I go there and I'm there probably two or three times a week, same way, always catching the person in front of me, or we'll do it at any fast food restaurant that we go to. You know, we always pick up the car behind us or whatever it is. And the thing is, is when you do that, people look at you kind of funny and they'll go like, why, why are you doing that? I said, man, I just want to bless you. He said, what, what do you mean? I said, yeah, I just want to bless you. And it starts an amazing conversation every single time. They'll say, man, where are you from? I was at the Starbucks in the Nashville airport the other day I was traveling 
and uh, walked up and did that. And this guy goes, man, I love that bag you're carrying. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So he went ahead and ordered. And I said, hey, I got you. And he goes, why? And I said, well, because I just want to. Well, we walked up and waited for our coffee, introduced me to his daughter, introduced me to his son. We started talking. He's a nurse at a hospital up in Chicago. And we, we talked. He was here in Nashville to do a wedding. And one thing led to another, and we exchanged business cards. It's just a cool way to meet people. And what does it cost you? Four, five, six bucks, right? It's nothing. It's just always be mindful of the people that are around you. I love to hear um, any stories uh, from your grandkids that mm -hmm. you can remember how they reacted or maybe yeah. something they did or how it changed them. And, and um, I'll give you a second to think on that. But there's one of the people I know, Penny Cowden, actually, she's a board member at, pay, at the Pay It Forward Foundation. And I was talking to her a couple of months ago and in that the foundation I really go, I said to Penny, I go, yeah, I saw the movie pay it forward. She's like, yeah, that's the, the same person who created that, you know, movement in that script also created the pay it forward foundation. It's one of my you know favorite movies because of the concept of paying it forward. So, um, the grandkids tell me about, tell me yeah. a story from them. Yeah. I could tell you stories probably for hours. Uh, just thinking of a couple last year, Aubrey is our middle grandchild. She's, uh, 13 years old. And last year we went out and we, we spend the entire day doing it for others, nothing for ourselves. They're always like, Hey, big A, can we go get some candy? No, today, this is not about you. Like this, everything's about everybody else. And they always know that, but the younger ones always try you, you know, the ones that are five, six, seven years old, they're always like, man, maybe if I just ask one more time, but you know how kids are. So last year, Aubrey was uh, 12 and she came up to me after we got home. It was late in the afternoon. We got here to the house and she walked up to me and she hugged me and she just stood there and hugged me. And uh, I just stood there. Obviously, as a grandparent, you're just going to stand there as long as they want to hug you. And she looked up <laughs> at me and she said, Big A, this has been the happiest day of my life. And I looked at her and I thought, what? She goes, just seeing all their faces. This has been the happiest day of my life. And she just turned around and walked off. And I thought, you know, uh, their, their parents are able to get them things they want, and I'm able to get them things that they want and those kind of things. But really what made more of an impression on her was seeing the faces of the other children, the faces of those senior adults when they would sit there and smile. And the senior adults would, Abby even told me a couple of years ago, we went to a nursing home. We didn't even have anybody in the, that nursing home. And she came up to me and she said, they were just so happy to see us. And I said, you know, Abby, the truth is most senior adults at those nursing homes, they don't have many people to come and see them. They really don't. A lot of the kids that they have live out of town and they don't really have anybody that will just come and hang with them. And when they're there, oftentimes they're forgotten. That's the truth. I hate to say that, but oftentimes kids will put them there. They'll either be out of town or they can, or they got their own life going on. And when you just take the time to sit down, they don't want anything from you. They're not looking for a gift. They're not wanting anything. It's time. The time is the most valuable thing that we could possibly give them. Ask them how their day is going. And most of them are not having very good days, quite honestly. They spend the vast majority of their time taking medication or some ailment that's bothering them. And for little kids to sit there and write out little cards, and it's very innocent cards. It's very innocent. It's like, hey, I was just thinking of you today. Love, Owen, or love, Abby, or you know, and they're like, it brings tears to their eyes. And when we would get in the car, the kids would always say, they always seem so happy when we leave. It's like, they're just glad we're here. And so Jeremy, it's just those kind of stories. It's never about the amount or it's never about the gift. You know, the things that my grandchildren see and we let them be involved in it, you know, like they'll say, like we went today and uh, we, we bought a lot of stuff. I think we bought about 18 coats, you know, for all these people. And it adds up, you know, numerically. And they're like, that's a lot of money. And I said, well, we're just grateful that we're able to do this. You don't have to do that amount. It can be a much smaller amount. But if you start now, if you start at a very small amount now, it's easy to work your way up. God has just really blessed us over the years financially, or we'll leave a, like I left a hundred dollar tip at Waffle House. Well, I don't say that to boast, but you know, most of the time they're getting two, three, four bucks on a meal and you leave a hundred dollars and the kids are like, wow, big A, that's a lot of money. I said, well, 
yeah, it is a lot of money, but we can do it and we should, right? It's just about being generous and we should always be generous. I don't think kids just learn that. I think they have to be taught. And I think the easiest way, Jeremy, to teach that is for it to be caught and not taught. I think it's a lot easier when they see the parents doing at random acts of kindness or being very generous. It's easy for the child to grow up in that home and uh, also be generous. And so I think it's incumbent on us as parents and grandparents uh, to really demonstrate that and model that for our children. And here's the other thing is that we want to do it for people that can never repay you. You don't ever want to do it for the wrong motivation to get something. You want to do it for people that can never repay you. But Jeremy, over the years, we followed people and helped people. And when it gives them a little bit of hope, and inspiration, they can do a lot better. Oftentimes people don't do well because they don't have any hope. And when we're able to help them along, it gives them hope. Yeah. I love that, you know, just a small thing could be life-changing for someone else. And also there's that trickle effect, the huge trickle effect. And, you know, um, and I feel like the more giving creates more giving, right? That person's going to go out and go, wow, like, what can I do for someone else now that someone's done that for me? So it, it lives beyond that one, that one gift. Yeah. You know, what I would love for the audience to do today, if you're hearing this, is just start small. Just say, hey, we can't go out and do all those things, but we're going to pick a day and we're going to do it consistently. That's not the only time of the year we do that. I mean, we're always practicing generosity throughout the year and we're always trying to pay it forward and In no way, and I hope your audience don't take this as boastful because we certainly don't mean it as boastful. We mean it as encouraging to the audience that's listening. But just pick a time with your family and say, hey, we're going to save 50 or 100 bucks and we're going to take that and we're going to go do something for a family. This year, primarily, we focused on one family. Uh, I don't know how long they've been in the U.S. They're Hispanic. And they don't speak any English at all. And we had a school teacher that located this family for us. And uh, fortunately, I do speak Spanish. And so I was able to communicate with them once we got there. Uh, But there was a household of seven children and three adults. And this house was probably 600 square feet total. And uh, to, you know, give everybody a coat and hat and a jersey and then, you know, a couple of other shirts and some warm clothes and uh, some other things. One of the little girls just had a baby and we bought a few cases of diapers and rattlers and outfits and gave them some money and some money for groceries and things like that. And without even speaking English, the smile on their face and the way they were nodding and saying, gracias, muchas gracias. And I'm like, hey, listen, I'm just glad we're able to help you. And for our children to see that, and it gives them a feeling and an inspiration of they want to continue that. So that's my hope for your audience today is maybe this is a bit of inspiration that you can start a tradition like this. If you want to call it Gratitude Day, you can do that. There's even some clips out there that you can go and see on YouTube. And there's uh, just do hashtag Gratitude Day and go look and do the same. And let's start a movement. I mean, let's get this thing going and get it around the world. So yeah, gratitude day. Aaron, I want to be the first one to thank you. It is, is when I got that uh, text from you, I was truly inspirational and what else can we be doing always? What I, what can else can I be doing? What else can my family be doing? Whether it's time or money or whatever it is just to, to give it forward, to pay it forward. And um you know, uh, I just want to thank you for, for taking time out of your Black Friday and your giving gratitude day. Where else can people learn more about you? Where should we point them towards? Yeah, but, you know, if you want to know more, you can reach out to me at viewfromthetop.com. If you want to know more specifics or any way I can encourage you, feel free to reach out to my email. And I don't normally give that out, but Jeremy, uh, you're a really sharp guy and you got a great audience and I want to be able to help them. But just put uh, put an email out to me, Aaron at viewfromthetop.com. And in the subject line, just put gratitude day. And we'll reach out to you and uh, help you or encourage you or give you some other ideas. You know, you had asked me on the text today, is there any kind of document put out yet? There's not, but I'll put one. But now, now there is. 
Yeah, That's why I wanted to do this. It's like whatever can, it takes, you know, to help your audience to do this. But uh, yeah, yeah reach out to me. I they thought this would be a perfect resource to point people towards if they're yeah. want uh, ideas and inspiration. That yeah. you know, I'm gonna re-listen to this and pick up some some things that I'm gonna do. So you totally know, Jeremy, I just it. thought of this and I just remembered it. And I just thought of it, uh, but we put together 101 random acts of kindness document. Uh, and if you'll email me at Aaron at view from the top.com, I'll send you that. Uh, and Jeremy, I'll send it to you as well. And you can get it out every how would best help you if you want to do it on your show notes. I love or, it. Yeah, yeah we'll put it out there. 101 random acts of kindness and we'll get that to you and it'll give you a lot of ways that you can go out and be generous. Love it. Thank you, Aaron. Everyone enjoy Enjoy. and we'll see you on the other side. See you, buddy. Have a good one. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I feel like a hundred grand